Hi, my name is Dana Beck. Welcome to my YouTube video. And today, what I'd like to share with you is step number six out of a series of six steps to create an effective email autoresponder series. And step number six is, as it says right here, monitor and improve. Now, you know, you, you've, you've set up your autoresponder and uh, it's, it's chugging right along, it's rocking and rolling. But, you know, an email autoresponder series is something that, you know, you don't create one day and then kind of sit back and completely forget about. No. Uh, to get the best results from your autoresponder series, you should be monitoring the performance of your emails to identify areas for improvement, areas that, you know, that need attention. And the best way to do this is do, you know, do a split test, do an A-B test on either the entire series or individual emails as well to identify those areas that might need some attention, that might need some improvement, uh, or some things just that simply need to be fixed. And here's what you should pay attention to when you analyze your autoresponder campaign. Open rates. This is a big one. Open rates. You know, this is the first thing you should look at because um, every time your subscriber decides not to open your email, more than likely they're not going to open the next one or the next one or the one after that. And, um, you know, and the average open rate across the industry, now this is a general ballpark figure, but the average open rate in all industries is around 22.8%. And again, this is a, a broad uh, broad general, um, you know, guideline, a, a ballpark figure, if you please. However, open rates can differ greatly depending upon your niche, depending upon uh, your your list, and you know other factors as well. But if you're suffering, if you're getting very low open rates, here are some things that you can look at that can help with your open rates. And I want to bring this list up for you. The first one is relevancy. First one is relevancy. Is, is this autoresponder relevant to your list? Consider segmenting your email list even further, um, you know, because you want to tailor your emails to specific uh, characteristics of individuals on your, on your list. Uh, secondly, you know, are your subject lines are as good as they can be? Um, you know, and if not, uh, try some different ones. Try try some other subject lines. Because as I said in another video, the first thing people see are the subject lines. So your subject lines really got to capture their attention. It's got to really, really capture their attention. And then, are you sending your emails at the best times? You know, test sending your emails at different times of the day or, or at different time intervals. Uh, email timing can be can be really, really important. And so, I mean, if you're sending all your emails in the morning and no one's opening them, try sending them in the afternoon and see if your open rate goes up. And if so, then that's now you find your target area where you want to send your emails. And then your click-through rates. This is another big one. This is very, this is almost as important. Actually, I would say it's probably just as important, you know, as your open rate. Your click-through rates. Once your subscribers have opened your email, are they actually uh, taking action uh, from you that you know, that you need to take that you want them to take. Well, the average click-through rate again. This is a, a general ballpark figure. The average click-through rate across industries is around 3.2 percent. Yes, 3.2 percent. Some places it's higher. Some you know, in some cases it's lower. But that's a, the general average. Now, if you think you have a low click-through rate, perhaps your body copy is not as effective as it needs to be. So here's some things you want to consider, you know, uh, to improve your click-through rate, to improve your copy. Is the copy of your email relevant to the subject line? This is important. Um, is your, does your subject line and does your copy, the text of your email, are they congruent? Are, are they talking about the same thing? You know, I like using the golf ball analogy. If your subject line says, get the world's greatest golf balls, and then in your subject, I mean, in your in your context of your email, you're, ta you're talking about the best golf courses, you know, in the country. That's not congruent. If your subject line says, get the greatest golf balls ever in your body, you want to be talking about the greatest golf balls ever. You want it to be congruent with your, with your you know, your subject line, your title, if you please, of your email. And here's another one. Did you offer real value to your subscribers in your email? How can you make the copy even more relevant to their current needs? Um, so again, you know, make it provide value 
are relevant to what they are looking for. Um, again, using the golf ball analogy, you know, if if, uh, if you're sending emails to uh, to to mothers that are expecting, well, they're not <laughs> they're not going to open your emails. You got to make sure that your emails are written and targeted towards the interests of your audience, interest of your subscribers. Is your call to action clear enough? You know, what are the benefits of people clicking? Is it really clear? Click here, click here to get more information. I mean, that's a, that's a real big key. And then lastly, is the link easy to find? Consi you know, consider re you know, repositioning your text. Um, consider, you know, putting your, your, your link, your URL, whatever, in a more obvious place where they'll see it. You know, put, put an arrow on it, put, you know, anything. Um, but make sure your, your call to action is very clear and the link that they're supposed to click on, the hyperlink, is very, very clear and very obvious in your email. Lastly, the unsubscribe rate. And unsubscribe rates are going to happen to everybody. You're, you're going to get unsubscribe rates. You, you, can't, you can't avoid it, all right? And, you know, and that's, just, that's, the that's just the nature of the beast, so to speak. And usually these people who unsubscribe would never have opted in or purchased your service or your product anyway in the first place. And the average unsubscribe rate across industries is around 0.53, you know, about 0.5%. And that's the average across, in general, across most industries. Now, if you have a large percentage rate, then consider, you know, some of the following things. Why did people, why did people subscribe to your list in the first place? Um, you know, I mean, did you, in your, in your post that got them to subscribe to your, your chat, your, uh, not your channel, but subscribe to your email list, you know, did you promise them one thing and then in your, e and then in the initial email, it was something different? Um, you know, and you know, you just got to make sure again, that congruency is really important. And then is the content of your autoresponder highly relevant to the segment that is being sent to you know again making sure that the content of your email is going to those individuals that are looking for that specific content in other words um you don't want to talk about brand new products you know or your your entry-level products in your in your service uh to somebody who's already bought products from you um, if this person, you know, you want to send it to a newbie, someone who's never bought your service or bought your products, you want to send that kind of email to them. But then you want to send a completely type of different email to those faithful, you know, customers who have bought products or bought your services in the past. You want to send a different kind of email to them. So that's really important. And this is, this is really, this is another great key. Are you sending too many sales emails before giving value emails first? In another email, in another a video rather excuse me um i laid out a uh, a kind of like a a, a system or a uh, a schedule if you please of how to send out value emails and pitch emails and you know you should send out like one pitch email for every four or five value emails you know like pitch value 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 pitch i mean most of your emails should be value providing value and again you know that value can be how to uh, you know information product reviews uh how to solve certain issues or problems you know it could be almost anything but make sure it's it's value that your subscriber can use and will be interested in so you know the, these are some of the keys that you, you may want to look at if you if you've got low uh open rates and um this you know and looking at these and really drilling down on this will help you again improve your open rates so this you know again this is a, a little bit this is like i said before step number six in a series of six steps on how to create an effective email autoresponder series and this is again monitor and improve you want to go ahead and monitor the performance of your uh subscribe you know of your um autoresponder email series and, you know, and where you need to make improvements and adjustments, you know, go ahead and make those improvements and you'll see your open rate and your click-through rate definitely go up. So, hopefully you got value out of this. And if you did, please leave a comment. I very much enjoy reading your comments and I respond to all my comments. And if you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There is a, there is a, a button below this video where you can click on to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And, and if you got value out of this and you'd like to learn more about how you can be an effective online entrepreneur, how you can grow your business to new heights or even start 
um, an online business, a successful online business, and how you can earn a steady monthly, yearly income as an online entrepreneur. If this is something that interests you, then go ahead and check out this link right here. Now, this will be a URL below the video. Now, something I want to say about this. This is not an MLM. This is not an income opportunity or an investment opportunity. This is not a bait and switch. This is not a website where you go and install some software and all of a sudden and sit back and watch your money come rolling in. No, it's none of those things. This is a training center, a training hub designed by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. And if you go to the site, you'll get all the tools, all the insight, all the strategies, all the training you, you could possibly ever need to be very successful online and be the absolute best entrepreneur you possibly can be. So go ahead and check out this uh, link. And, uh, and again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would very much appreciate it because I will be posting more information, more strategies, more insight on how you can really build your online business successfully. So thank you so very much for watching. Have a phenomenal day and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so very much and you have a tremendous day now. Bye-bye.